Welcome back to step three in our tutorial on how to make a groundbreaker. In this tutorial we're going to do all the detail work and get all this torn flesh all over our groundbreaker. So stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how that's done. What you what you want, what you what you want. Okay, now that we've got uh, the first skinning done, and hopefully you guys have gone back and at least put a couple more layers on the chest piece here to really help stiffen that up, um, and it's dried out. Before we move on to this next step, especially if you're going to put this out in the weather and you don't want to go outside in the yard and pick it up and, and put it in the garage or something during the rain, I mean, if you want to do that, it's fine, you can move on, but uh, I suggest right here at this point, since we can get to everything that's enclosed in here, which you can see I've already done, I painted this with a with an exterior black latex paint. You could do it with a valve spar sealer or something else, or even the Flex Seal. Uh, there's a product, it's called Flex Seal, it comes in black or, or clear, and it it's like a rubberized coating when it sprays on. This stuff is very, very good. Uh, it's relatively expensive, about $16 a can. You could use that to seal this up, but right now, while this is all exposed, um, well, you want to seal it first, because once we start, which we're going to do next, once we start putting all these strands on to create the neck and do all this detail work through here, all this stuff underneath is going to be hidden. And once you go, apply that stuff first, and if you don't have this sealed, there's no way to get back down into here to make sure that it's properly sealed. So if you're going to do this in the weather, before we move on to the next spot, you need to seal all this first. With, that way you make sure you've got all of this stuff sealed. So if water gets down into it, um, it'll just help prevent anything from falling apart. But anyway, now let's get on to the fun part. The part where you really creep this thing out and this is really it can be as gory as you want as detailed as you want it's up to you but out of all the things to use because I've done some of this with um, paper towel before and it works okay you can get away with it and some other things but my favorite thing to use are cotton balls a cotton ball once it dries up gives it just gives this excellent rotted flesh look um i can't it, i've tried paper towels i can't achieve the same rotted look that the cotton balls use so i always go back to cotton balls and i would suggest use cotton balls it gives you the best result i mean these things are only a few bucks for a bag uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is unroll these little cotton balls and i don't know if you guys are familiar with it, it can be tedious, but you want to unroll a bunch of these first so you've got them ready. If you find the end like that, you can peel it back. And once you get it loose, you can just simply unroll your entire little cotton ball to give you a stretch of cotton just like this. And this is what we're going to use to skin this thing with. Unroll a whole bunch of these, get yourself ready to start uh, doing the detail skin and all the all the cool fun stuff. So I'll, I'll work the neck over and then we'll work the, the face over and then come down the shoulders and work our way down. Now like I said I love working with the cotton it gives a great texture at the end but it can also be frustrating to work with because it wants to stick to your fingers and different things. If you just work past that and get a feel for it then um, it won't be so bad you know you'll get used to it this is going to be very messy very messy so make sure you've got something to protect your countertop work table table whatever you're working over make sure you have something to protect the surface because this is going to drip and you're going to get paste all over the base you're going to get it all over whatever's around before i really get going on this and we just throw in the high speed we'll t uh talk about kind of the easiest way to do it what we're going to do is take our piece of cotton here and we're going to just put it all the way down in our mache paste and we're going to dip it down in there we bring it out we're going to squeeze out as much of this paste as we can you want to because it's going to waterlog this and when you go to uh, apply it 
It'll, if it's got too much in it, it'll pull itself back away and it falls off. It's very, very frustrating. So you want to wring it out really good to try to keep that from happening. And like I said, you got to work with it. it. You're not just going to plop it up and it's going to stick, especially um, since we've got our sealer on here. It's harder to get this to stick to this. If this was just straight paper, it's much easier. We're going to run this. And I know this is kind of short, so I'm going down the whole length. Uh, but I'm going to run these short ones. And I'm going to run some more from here down. And then we'll just kind of layer it up. But uh, just stay with it. It is frustrating. But once you learn how to get it going, uh, it works out nice. And it gives you, in my opinion, the best, the best look for uh, rotten flesh. Here's where you can really play with it. <clears throat> when this is coming out, you can leave. That's hard to see with the light. Let's see if I can change the lighting on it. You can leave things like this if you want. It just looks like torn skin and flesh after it dries out. Um, totally up to you, just how you feel, um, what works for you and what you like. Now on the sides of the jaw lines here, I like to have a torn, fleshy look coming down. So I take the uh, cotton ball after I dip it in and I just tear it up in smaller pieces and apply it over. That way we get some kind of ripped, fleshy looks. <laughs> When I start covering the skull, you can really pull your cotton out quite a ways, stretch it, make it do all kinds of weird kind of gnarly stuff to it. The more ripped and fleshy it looks, the, the better off it's going to be. And so also I like to <clears throat> kind of show pieces of exposed bone, you know, and, and paint those white later on. So in my head, what I do while I'm doing this is I picture everything in black basically as bone. So I'm going to lay out an area, I think, right here where we got some torn, where the part of this forehead's tore open, and then you can see uh, the skull protruding out of it, and, and we'll uh, paint it up that way. I think it adds a good effect. And don't be afraid to really kind of Pull that stuff back and make a, a real good ridge. The better your ridge is here, the easier it is to see later on when you go to paint this thing up to realize that's where your skull was exposed. And then you can pick other areas out. Dig down in and just clean up a spot. And create another another area where the skull was exposed. All right, so we got the head and neck pretty much done. So we're gonna go ahead and work the shoulders over and do stuff along the body and arms. Anyway, uh, we're gonna start on these and, and get going. I 
knee's kind of fighting me, so I wanted to stiffen it up. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, heat gun to do that. I mean, it's all up to you. You could suck it back into that first bit of skinning, or you can take some of these and really get a hold of this stuff and stretch it and just create this loose, torn, broken. Skin texture. In some of these areas, like right here, if you think you should have a hole, you just reach in, grab anything like this little tool, and you can tear it open and create these cool little torn out stretch pieces and let them hang. And I recommend doing that after you get all of it covered so you're not going over any work you've already done. So we've got the head done, the neck's almost done. We put a few things here and we kind of uh, got the back done a little bit. Now on the front, right here, you can see some of these torn pieces. All I did, like I showed you before, is I took a little tool and I just grabbed into the uh, cotton and pulled this down, pulled it out and just tore it up to make it look a little more gnarly. Now before I do anything else, uh, we have so much on here that's so loaded with glue and glue is just going everywhere and the more you move it things kind of move around. I'm going to let this set overnight, dry up and harden because I want to add a little more cotton in here and bring some things down and I need this to be stiff so we got something that we can connect to. Do the same thing here. I want to put a few more layers in here to add a little more detail and to do that I need these dry and I need them to be hard so I've got something that we can really connect to. So we're going to allow this to dry up solid overnight and then tomorrow and then we'll continue on. We'll go ahead and skin the arms here, finish those out. We'll bring a few more pieces over this. We will finish up underneath the neck in here and bring down some more cotton so this looks a little better. And then we will uh, attach cotton from the bottom of the chest cavity down to the board. That's kind of the hardest thing to do on this. We may have to cheat a little bit and run some tape first so we got some for our, our cotton to attach to, but we will deal with that here shortly. Anyway, at this point in time, let it dry, leave it alone. I know it's tempting, you just want to go further and further, but trust me, with it this wet and this sloppy, you'll just uh, make a mess of things. So sit back, relax, let it dry up, come back the next day, and uh, start the rest of it. All right, so we let this set overnight and dry. It's not completely cured, um, but it is uh, cured hard enough for us to continue on. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start on the arms here, get these covered up, get some bone exposed, and then um, I'll do these, I'll do the other arm, then I'll do this cavity piece in here then I will move back up into this area to add some more um, rotten flesh up there so enough talk let's get after it looking and we're gonna work on this area here I mean, you have a few options you could do you could if we had a batch of paper clay uh, made up we could wrap individual pieces here and just make it look like a spine and leave it exposed uh, you can do it without clay you could wrap uh, 
tape and paper around it and then mache it and make it look like a spine. Um, however, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to show you in this tutorial, is we're going to come in from the bottom side here and we're going to run this cotton with this stretchy torn skin from inside here down to this basically this mounting point, this center point where it looks like there's the skin left from uh, the torso here down to the stomach region that's just collapsed and tore up and he's pulling that area out of the, the ground too. This is a very frustrating uh, part. Then I want you guys to know that right off. If we could have in the beginning if I would have cut this thing shorter been a little bit easier but when you add the glue to the cotton on this it really weights it down and you'll see it try to pull and move around so it's very hard to, to get it to stick and then stretch it this whole way to get it to hold and I've fought that before uh, done it that way but this time what we're going to try is I'm going to run some duct tape up in here and then run some strands down to the bottom here and some strands here and credit so we've got something that once we stick it we can stick the cotton and uh, the cotton that's in the mache paste we can stick it to that uh, duct tape and give us something to grab a hold of and as soon as we get you know quite a few pieces around here that are stuck to it, then we can just kind of grip on to each piece as we go and, and fill it up it may reach a point that we have to only do so many and let it dry one more time and then add to it um, we'll see we're going to give it a try and then uh, once we get that in place we're going to come back up in here and I add a little more detail in here but I do want to show you something that I really haven't explain or show this what's really cool with cotton and why I enjoy uh, using it so let's flip this thing around so here's what's really cool about the cotton these pieces right in here to get that look all you had to do here I'll come over here all we got to do is reach in and just grab a little bit of that cotton and pull and then let go and that leaves us and that leaves us these nice little neat tears in the skin and gives that torn tattered skin so that's what's really cool about the cotton and that's the same thing we I've done here in all these areas except I used a little tool at first and pulled that out and laid it out but you grab a few strands of that cotton and you stretch it and pull it and just let it fall and it makes such a great um, effect so you can see we got a lot of texture in this thing all over the place so like i said we're going to try to use some uh, duct tape here and see if it'll help us out to give us something to bite onto I do want to emphasize, like I said earlier, uh, this mixture, this mache mixture is mainly just wood glue and water. That's pretty well it. And you want your water to glue ratio, you want more glue than water. You want this stuff to be tacky. You want it to coat your hand or coat your spoon when you're pulling it out. The tackier it is, the better it's going to help this stick, especially to these surfaces like this duct tape. So for this part of this, it's key to use a wood glue to do this with. Now I use Type Bond 2. Uh, the reason I use Type Bond 2 is because it's water resistant. And this thing's going to be outside and I want every aspect that I can for this thing to hold up in the rain. And as well when wood glue dries it's extremely stiff so that'll help stiffen all this up as all this stuff dries out so let's uh let's get going and see if this idea works and also <clears throat> just to help you guys out what i'm doing is i'm applying the first bit of this cotton up here to the 
top side of the rib cage, making it stick, and then rolling it under and bringing it down to the tape itself. We want to make sure we've got this adhered to the top side of the structure so that if the tape gives away later, we've got good support from this cotton being dried up and stuck to stuck up to the to this upper torso. stretching this cotton out almost to the point of breaking before I'm laying it on. There's a few more spots up underneath here that I want to stretch some of this stuff and kind of cover that a little bit. But right now it's too wet and it's getting too heavy and it's wanting to fall away. So at this point in time, uh, it's good to know when to say when <laughs> and when to stop. So we're going to stop right now on this section right here. Leave this, that way it can dry and then I'll come back in uh, the next day and I'll add some more in here. I'm not going to show you guys that. You, uh, you get the gist of how this works, but I'll allow that to dry up overnight and then I'll uh, come back into it later and fix that up. I'm also going to go ahead and throughout this section right here, and I'm not going to film it as well because you guys have the general idea. I'm going to take some smaller pieces and I'm going to go ahead and do what I'm doing down here. I'm going to pull them out wide and apply them onto here. Kind of like what I did over here. If you guys remember when this dried up, it looked like this. And I added some more of this in here just to fill that out a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to apply some more up on the top side there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side of the shoulders just to give it a little more of something there. But that's pretty well it. So once we're all done with that, we'll let this thing set out and dry. And uh, we'll be ready for paint. Our ground breaker's out, uh, drying up in the sun. Give it a little bit of sun time, help that uh, glue set in and get it pretty firm. And then I'll bring it in uh, here later on this evening and put a fan over it, let him dry up. Like I said, there's a few spots underneath tomorrow that I'm going to hit just to cover up a few things. But that gives you guys really the idea. You know what to do with it. You can get as crazy as you want with the uh, cotton and making the stringy bits coming off the front and down the sides. You can even add more tour sections to the bottom once it all dried up. I mean, it's really the, uh, the ideas are endless and just really up to you and what you want to do. So this concludes the second part of our tutorial, which is skinning it out and getting the detail what we have left is uh is paint and paint detail and that's what you'll see in the third step so hopefully this was helpful and hopefully you guys are quite a ways along in your project here and i'll see you guys in the third tutorial where we are going to paint this thing all up and seal it and have it ready for your display for halloween